Yeah, I think we're we're good to move whenever you guys are. I think um, I think Al and I are going Never to sticking. be DJing this next round, but you guys are still here having to run slides, so it's going to be a lot like it was. <laughs> All right, so I, think I we're have, sticking with Aha slides. That's it on yeah, our system. So please don't hack Aha slides anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Man, honor among thieves. I don't know. Isn't there a saying about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait, we're all ethical here, though. We're, we're ethical, all, yeah. We're going. We, yeah, we're, we're on not the right thieves. side of the law. So. Right. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can kick it off. You are clear. Oh wow, we're gonna we're gonna dive right into this. You ready, Al? I guess so. Uh, oh yeah. We've got uh, I mean, this is an easy, easy the Matrix, easy the Matrix. Ah, uh, going Paul, hackers, Paul, going hackers. Paul did this question. I'm sure of it. He just has to uh, one up Jeff and and show him once and for all that the the right answer is the right answer. There's really no rhyme or reason either. I mean, sometimes you think it's generational, but it, it it's really not. No, I think it just what one sp I, I don't know. I love all of these. Like having to pick between sneakers and hackers is a dilemma every time I look at it. And then <laughs> picking between like Swordfish and Matrix, like uh, Matrix is obviously much more uh, entertaining and and a lot more mentally and cinematically better. But Swordfish was just that was the cool. You know, the hacker was finally cool and, and had the uh, had the girls in the cars and was doing the things that we all think about doing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with sneakers as the uh, the best just traditional hacker movie, best representation very, of our is, field. Yeah, it is very traditional. I, I think it's really also stood the test of time uh, and just has some great writing. Hackers takes it for me just for so many reasons, like style and soundtrack, culture, culture set design. The whole thing is... Hackers it's, it's is too my, handy reminds for me. me I would take sneakers thing. between Spray the two. Spray painting your laptop. See, I think with hackers, though, you got to remove the, the cheesy interfaces. There was a reason why that ended up there. That was the uh, director's decision. They actually had folks from the Masters of Deception as consultants for the film. It was a hacking group in, in New York. Um, and some of those members were... Uh, Mark Abin, I believe, was one of them, and they were they were the consultants for the film, and they were like, "Look, this is what hacks really look like." And the director was like, "Yeah, no, we're going to take it into a more stylistic direction," which kind of, I mean, it does fit with the rest of the style of the film, but of course, we look at that and go, "Well, that's not, you know, how hacking really works. Why are there letters and equations floating on the screen? That's crazy." Honestly, my honorable mention is Ocean's Eight. Ocean's Eight has an incredibly realistic hacking scene in it. I, it, someone else has, has mentioned that before, Al, as well. Yeah, Rihanna does a hack in that one, which, I mean, apart from the timetable and, like, the tools used, is pretty much spot on. Hmm. Like, she does OSINT and everything. It's real good. Hmm. Sorry, I didn't have it in the list. Ocean's 8. Yeah, it I feel comes like up I've every seen now it, but and I don't remember it. Yeah. yeah. But for hack your brain, I'd say the Matrix too. Oh, now, will polarity on. hash stuff? Does it have hashing al uh, a hashing algorithm integration? So you could build it. It doesn't have one that's going to crack the hash there. At least uh, out of the gate, we don't have uh, one that we publicly make available. But uh, if you wanted to uh, send a hash over to a service, uh, you absolutely could. Uh, and in this scenario, if you wanted to use CyberChef and go through multiple passes of something you could, or if you wanted to uh, uh, Google. Google, yeah, <laughs> Google might be your uh, yep. key here uh, for a quick answer. Now that we're a few seconds in. Yeah, the uh, some of these hashes are ones that you, you just automatically start to pick apart and, and recognize. And it is funny how over time those tend to change like uh there was a particular year and season one that i remember really well and that was just because we did so many pen tests during that season uh, and we used it for password spraying so prevalently that it just it sticks but some of these are kind of you know forevers but this one is uh this one's a good one yeah and in terms of generating a question here uh 
we've done different versions of this where uh you know number of pa passes matter of course um or uh or uh if it's salted or not but in this case obviously it's a non-salted hash so it's one of that's the actually, open. That's actually question. a pretty good question. Uh, if, if you're looking at the salt and you're having to do multiple steps to figure it out, especially if you're looking at something, you know, like a, you could say it's it's a type of NTLM, but is it NTLM V1? Is it a challenge response? Is it V2? Are you getting net NTLM? Like kind of what the differences of those two are? That that would matter as far as like how you go about attacking that the question. Yep. I guess the quickest way to, I mean, the simplest way is probably just to, just to SHA-1 sum on the command line for each one of those uh, passwords until one matches. Man, that that's hacking the multiple choice. Look at look at you going the backwards route here. <laughs> I think. I, I, I mean, I, I I I mean, at this point, the time's almost up. So, I, I don't think yeah. anyone, could, even if they uh, started following <laughs> that, uh, started doing that, I don't think they'd have it done in time. No, that's a, that's a pretty good way. And it is a common way that uh, you'll see a lot of uh, attackers leverage hashes is doing a, a reverse lookup script uh, for when for when you find hashes. It's very similar to how you're you're doing um, cracking hashes, but uh, doing those fast reverse lookups on known certain type of known uh, hashes provide you a quick method to really quickly pivot and leverage things that you see on the network. Uh, things like net NTL MV2s, mm -hmm. where you get challenge responses and you got to do some things that's a little bit different. You got to actually send that to a cracking rig or, or something, but a quick, look, mm -hmm. quick lookups for, for NTLM or, or even Landman is, is even better. You can do some of that stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, there's, I mean, it's, um, file hashes are something I have to track. Like if I drop a executable on disk on an assessment, I have to, I'm expected to hash that, have a hash for that file so that I can, I can help the, the client deconflict if they find it. Um, so it gets annoying, honestly, trying to deal with really, file hashes all the time. It really does. And there's some, there's some cool tools out there, but I have not seen anything that has done a great job other than if you can get red elk set up really, really well, uh, that's mm -hmm. been kind of nice to output some of that into into your logs and have a running running evaluation of some of that. Uh, that that's we do have helpful. an implementation right. of that uh, that's into, that's taking all of our Cobalt Strike logs and, and things of that nature. Yep, anything you generate out of Cobalt Strike, it hashes and puts it into your uh, your log stash. And that's it's but a lot of the nice stuff we do. We like a, we like we'll use Crack Map Exec to push a file to the server or something <laughs> nope. uh and it doesn't show up in the cobalt strike logs and so i have to remember to make sure to hash that file because and this is a good thing about cobalt strike every time you generate a new executable with cobalt strike it has a unique hash um but i have to remember that just again i have to remember to hash all these files yep yeah that is some of the that the note taking and reporting is where you make your money in red team, and that's really what distinguishes some some really good players is knowing, uh, having gut understanding of what opsec really is, how to keep good track of things, where attribution is going to come into play, where you're able to get to a certain objectives without setting off alarms, you know, living off the land, those kind of things, or uh, being very creative in your your methodology is is why. Um, and a lot less useful for a lot of clients. So. Well, that's what I that's what I I say that on stream all the time. What's the most important part of any pen test, red team assessment? What's the most important part? Uh, it's the report every time. The whole reason yeah. you're doing it uh, is so that you can generate the report and so that the client can improve, can take the report and improve their infrastructure. It doesn't matter if you're the best red teamer in the world on on the network, but if you can't generate a good report, like. Client's not going to be happy. You didn't do a good job, like that. You have to be, you have to have a, a good workflow down for generating a good report. Speaking of which, when is Zach's report due? Doesn't did anyone get a deadline on when he's going to file his report? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> expecting that full write up. That fingerprint. I personally believe in gin and Miskatonic that. here. He's a he's a friend of mine. He's a viewer. Uh, I believe in gin and Miskatonic. I think he's gonna he's gonna take it home this time. He won the first round. Did he win round two as well? Let's see. 
I didn't see on round two. The uh, those MAC address questions get kind of interesting. Uh, I've seen we've actually built out some like ML pathways around uh, trying to evade sandboxes and look at you know attribution machines or automatic scanners and. That was one of the early detection methods was looking at, you know, if it was a VMware or, or a certain MAC address, which isn't great because a lot of places are using VDIs. A lot of people are, are in VMs, so not always a great indicator. There's a lot more useful ones now, but first, that was uh, definitely a very common MAC address to, to be able to evaluate. I figured it was the type of one that someone might look at and know the uh, OUI for. Yep. Yeah, that one that one's uh, pretty common. That's another indication. Without actively scanning it, someone immediately actively scans it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny how far we've kind of changed as far as methodology and stuff, even from the early days. Like, uh, that maybe I came up in a, in a different environment, but you know, I just never really used scanning all that much. And it is is gotten exponentially less even even from those days. So yeah, the active, active scanning and stuff for good pen tests, good companies with mature security should probably have that with inside their attack surface monitoring and, and vulnerability management. And they should know what ports are open and, and have a good idea of what's there. So I probably won't go hit those because those should be either patched or being watched. And that's not where my value really is shown. But yeah, it's honestly, if the answer here is anything other than B or D, I have concerns. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it's, it's puzzling though. Like Microsoft just released an article on their security blog uh, about detecting network reconnaissance and specifically call out Nmap. I mean, I would I, again. I like going with what you guys were just talking about. I use that internally to like map stuff, but if I ended up on someone else's network, I would never fire up Nmap. <laughs> was, that would be bad. Yeah, yeah. That's Nmap, and and those are are good if you're trying to get really comprehensive. You're not trying to be quiet. The client mm. knows about it. You're really trying to offer them consulting and insight on what they should already know from, right. you know, about their network and asset management. But that's usually the only time you, you see a, a real true scanning effort that should be done, in my opinion. I mean, there's other times that that makes sense. And obviously, internal teams should definitely be doing this. But yeah, I mean, if if uh, a lot for most pen testers, like stealth does not matter at all. Like it's it's just not a concern. You've got a couple of days on target, and you got to work as efficiently as possible. And if Nmap scans are how you choose to do that, then by all means, um, uh, whatever helps your workflow. Now, as a red teamer, and st if stealth is your concern, then yeah, you probably won't want to use Nmap. Yeah, those pen tests, those pen tests, and being comprehensive is is really. In fact, I would even argue the fact of maybe I would ask the client for their vulnerability management scans and save the time of even the scanning point. If the point is comprehensive and I'm there to provide analysis and an understanding, that's probably a, a better use of my time and mm -hmm. capability. Ooh, this is a good one. Ooh, um... None of those are ones that I immediately recognize. Like you don't have any log four J up there or anything. Nope. Um is zero six four six was that print nightmare? No. Print nightmare was twenty twenty one. Uh yeah, no, I don't I'd have to look each of those up. But I guess this is again where polarity would come in would come in the clutch. Mm -hmm. Um Man, that, the easily able to Google those things. Is so nice, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that with the, the the exploit finder with the GitHub integration where you can just click and see all the POCs for that CVE instantly, like if that was the only thing the tool did, like it's it's almost worth its value right there from an offensive side. Yeah, I mean it does a, it, often, most of it but. is just a convenience. It, like it speeds up like if, if me opening a tab at Google and like typing in print nightmare GitHub or something to find a quick yep. POC. Um, and yeah, that, that, those little, those little efficiencies add up over time. I think they just make a cleaner workspace. Like that's one of the harder things in, in pen testing and offensive operations, red teaming, like keeping all of your tools working and in a good place, keeping your notes all organized and in a good place, keeping 
the repertoire of, of information and knowledge that's in your head and, and your notes, like all in a place that's easily and conveniently accessible and searchable, that's really hard to mm-hmm. do. That's still oh, yeah. something I struggle with. That is, de- I mean, that's definitely, that's definitely true. Uh, you get, you're dealing with a lot of, um, like, I mean, you know, on a, on a given day, I have three virtual machines open and I've got, I've got cobalt strike open. I've got, um, I've got Tmux panes all over the place. Just all, I, I mean, it's always a chaos of, uh, of of stuff and i also have to have notes and i have to take notes and it's anything that makes that whole mess more efficient is uh worth it in my book Ooh, the gap is closing Uh oh Jen and Miskatonic, I believe. You. Don't let me down. down. You're you're representing the cultists here. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> you're representing the passionate club of cephalopod enthusiasts. The hell is a cephalopod? It's an uh, octopuses and squids. Oh, uh, family genus. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Ooh. Interesting. This is a now, this is a I mean this is an interesting question. I mean it's obviously all three of those things. That was my, I, I would that say was my science answer. fiction. I would put science fiction personally. Man, that's my answer that's was all the one. above. That I don't was really not think a of it as a martial arts movie. I think of it more of a cinematography movie that makes the martial arts look really cool. But it also did some things for cinematography that I don't think were well captured before that right like a lot of the slow motion the you know jump defy gravity like there was some of that no you but you not need to go in back that and, very specific matrixy cinematography that now you know, is copied in a lot of places you need to go back to 90s hong kong movies in the wuxia film genre that's what they borrowed from i mean also they brought some anime stuff to live action which is pretty cool but that close correlation tyler to some of those chinese martial arts movies where people fly around. A lot of wire work. Ooh, this should be a quick one. Let's see it. Uh, Ooh. Oh, mm. Well, I won't give the the answer away, but uh, uh, I mean, this is I mean, Netcat uh, is sort of your bread and it, it even to this day is still a very useful is very very is still used all the time it's a great little swiss army knife for just about anything you need to catch a reverse shell or whatever um so knowing the proper switches to do something like this is pretty fundamental also a lot of different versions of netcat too uh i think i mean like uh there's there's ncat which i use personally which is mm-hmm. part of the nmap uh the is part of the which is part of the nmap i, yeah. I think uh suite it is yeah um uh that part that one supports encryption which is which is super nice uh you've also got uh, i've seen people using socat um yep. as well for to catch a to catch a reverse shell um there's everyone's got their own little workflow or whatever but uh um, I think net it all goes back to netcat. There's netcat and then there's imitators. Yeah, it's some you know a lot of distributions will Linux distributions will will change how netcat behaves. There's open open BSD netcat that you can install on Linux. I saw that somewhere in some documentation I was reading, and I didn't dig into the exact like differences in it. Yeah, uh, mostly the. The most useful thing about NCAT, I find it's a little bit more stable and has more verbose output, yeah, uh, which is nice. Um, but mainly, it just it has that support for encryption, which I use on real assessments. I won't mm-hmm. use it in CTFs because it's not necessary, but right. on real assessments, um, uh, OPSEC is important. Anyone know so. who the original author of the original NetCat was? Let me know his handle. Anyone in the Discord know the author of NetCat?
No. Going once, The Hobbit. Mm. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. Good trivia. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've looked mm -hmm. at it plenty of times, but wasn't coming back. Can't see who took that round. Uh oh. Your boy, your boy's still on top. Ben, oh man, he's on top by Benjamin like that round. twelve points. <laughs> or no, uh, twenty twenty two points. It's a close race. Yikes! It's a nail biter. Ooh, topical. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, so I think I know this one off the top. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm I'm pretty sure I know which one this one is. Like the tricky part is that there's multiple CVEs that have like after the original one. Mm came out and the whole security community went wild there was multiple <laughs> other cves uh and bypasses for some of the mitigations that were found um so uh the the, the first question you'd ask is if the, is this the original log 4j cve uh and if so which and then you then you have to think about which version it was it was hard to make this question clear and unambiguous because of the multiple cves and mm. uh and versions mm -hmm. and th there was you know hey this version might be vulnerable we're not sure we'll get back to you you need you need to uh you need to add one more to this you need to add that like one off what was it a dot nine dot twelve or something it was like really really old one it was like one random version was not vulnerable to it <laughs> and it was way back and then uh, the rest of them were that way there's a really old one in there they have to really think about that's right well, that's it. It was like a range, and then there's certain versions within the range that weren't vulnerable. So, yeah. These are cool questions. Uh, you did a good job on these ones. Name of the game is speed. How fast are you? I have full faith that most folks can get these right. Can you get it right in two seconds? <laughs> Again, that's that's one of the uh, the nice places, like... And I, I know you uh, own and work for Polarity, but honestly, it is one of those invaluable tools in a single location that uh, makes you look super smart sometimes, even when you're not. And you, you know, you've got Google, but your ability to very quickly identify a, a threat actor, a CVE, a hash, have quick information on that uh, just-in-time learning uh, for for client questions and stuff is is super nice to have too. Yeah, it's fun when people are sharing their screen and you can tell them about the hashes that are on their screen. They're like, how, how'd you transcribe those so quickly? I didn't. Yeah, the over the overlay is is super useful for. Well, the other the other nice thing about overlay and, and a lot of people I, I don't I haven't heard of a lot of people using it like this is when you have maybe a secure environment, something like a VM, where you're doing very specific attribution work or you're hunting you know very dangerous targets or you're on dangerous targets that are in a secure environment and like there's no copy paste uh, you don't have the ability to do analysis you have no connection uh, other than the GUI to that box uh, the screen overlay is one of the only ways you can actually do like hashes and, and large swaths of information uh, if you don't have the tools on the box so it makes a, a huge difference for like malware analysis attribution work or client provided VMs that uh, have no tools, have no copy paste, and are, are secured and neutered. Uh, the overlay provides quick info for for a lot of that stuff. Jin and Miskatonic coming out ahead convincingly with that last one. Uh, there's still three questions though. No, what? Funny, I have actually. If it's not uh, admin, it's got to be admin or password or secret. Oh man, that's what we need a polarity integration for. Something that's going to uh, automatically search for default passwords if I put a software if I put a piece of software in. That's a good one, man. Very doable. Better better put that one on the list.
What do we get? So what? So what horrendous password are we expecting here? Is it going to be? I I don't I don't think it's going to be admin. Um. Maybe secret or password. Password one two three perhaps. God, N sex, no one all those. love secret. Yeah, too many <laughs> secrets. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of Tomcat's. It's the, the only reason I'm thinking of it. Uh, Tomcat has uh, is usually Tomcat, Tomcat, or Admin Tomcat, or Admin Secret, or Tomcat Secret, something like that. Yeah, a lot of the, what was it, the multifunction devices, a lot of those were like Admin 1. There was uh, six zeros in one of them, eight zeros in another, all nines, I think six nines on the uh, Minolta's. <laughs> I'm a big Some of those fan multi, of the uh, multifunction printers, man. They're a gold mine. I'm a big fan of the no password. As the that one catches yeah. you once in a while too. You're like password yep. admin, you know, all the all the ones you try and then you, you hit enter out of frustration and you get in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this one is a dumb password, but it, it is not any that we've we've said yet. Right. Really? Oh, it's an administrator. Okay. No. No. Oh, the other ones that, that hang me you up are the, the ones that have admin for the username, but it's a capital A, and you, you don't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, okay, it is dumb. Maybe C123. It three. is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> not common. Not a common one I use to use in my top 10, though. Mm. But definitely a Google search. Ooh. Ooh, it's Ooh. tight. Briggs. Briggs coming at closing that gap. <laughs> Ooh, it's a nail biter, friends. It is a nail biter. You got two more questions, and it's basically a dead heat. <laughs> this is great. I like it when it's close. Oh, Gene Eric's up on the board now, though. Better watch out. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, this one is potentially, um, that's it's potentially awesome. tricky because Cobalt again, PowerShell is likes uh, that uh, little Endian sixteen-bit Unicode, base sixty-four. That's why I made it multiple choice to make it easy there, Al. So I like it, folks. Yep. Can't because there's a couple ways you could get that one. Yep. So it, you, it's multiple choice. You got to pick the one that is uh, is easiest here. Yeah, no I got tripped up by that .NET Base64 encoding just the other day. I was trying to obfuscate a uh, <laughs> uh, a .NET ex or a .NET assembly, um, and one of the strings I just decided to Base64 it, and uh, it wasn't un it wasn't un Base64 encoding um, and producing the correct output because I used the wrong form of Base64. Um, so oh. that'll get you. You have to be you have to be aware of that when you're dealing with .NET. That is Standards. true. Standards. Did you learn that the hard way, or did you learn that in your test environment prior to the hard way? Oh no, it, I, I learned it on in the test environment. <laughs> I was the executable wasn't running properly, uh, and I I properly tested it ahead of time, uh, and I managed nice. to debug what the issue was. It's always those two a.m. ones where you're you're uh, coding on the fly because you've got to bypass something very specific, and and you're going to lose access that you make mistakes on and don't test, and then you make mistakes anyway. <laughs> Or you're underneath of a desk on the phone with someone trying to build you stuff on the fly while mm -hmm. typing blindly. <laughs> it gets uh, it does get it does get spicy sometimes in the security community. Sometimes, and then it can oh. get really boring. Other times, there's there's some anti glamour that does need to be spread as well. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's another there's another god. Jin and Miskatonic is in the Discord right now, uh talking about some gotchas and he's like, Well, I had a new line in my base sixty four and I was like, oh, I've yeah. done that, been there, been there, man. Oh yeah. You're copy and pasting and you get a new line tacked on. Oh, I hate that. Or you're copying out of Linux into Windows and it and you're in like uh what was it? The old one was uh, Sublime and Notepad plus plus. One of those did not like the copy paste between the versions from Linux to, to Windows and it would always add a random character in there. And you just had to like Ugh. literally copy paste it back and forth. Gross. It oh Briggs. 
Briggs is ahead by what 30 30 like uh by 28 points. Ooh. Oh my, I think I just failed my math class. 26 points. My goodness, it's a Windows execute. What Windows execute? Oh boy, here we go. Another the, shell code disassembly one. You can get the full shell code here at that link. So don't 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 not use it. Go grab it so you can copy it out. Man, that uh that enterprise version with the the HUD right now would be amazing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That CyberChef version, uh, that CyberChef disassembly, that's a that's a freaking game changer. I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea CyberChef could do disassembly. Yeah, you might want to use that here. Mm. You don't need to, but you might want to. And it makes it so clean too. That's the other thing. Like some of those disassemblers, like you end up with a bunch of like random shit all over the place. And that one was like. There's your your disassembled straight up right in a, yeah, a window. Yeah, real you can clean paste like uh, push EAX and real clean assembly there. Real real nice. <laughs> so what's your uh, what's your next live stream going to be about? Who me? Uh, yeah. um, we're either we either need to finish up. Uh, we've been fighting with Anubis on Hack the Box, okay, and we've been fighting with uh, Hollow on uh, Try Hack Me. We'll be finishing up one of those two tomorrow. Um, Very nice. Uh, one of them is going to require an NTLM relay, which should be pretty sporting, and the other one requires uh, some Active Directory certificate services exploitation, which again will be interesting. So it'll that be sporting. That's pretty cool. No, I've, I actually went back and watched a couple of your streams because the, the CTF thing has never been something I've really dove into. Like, I mean, you work all day doing doing this. It's like usually the last thing you're thinking about. However, like you don't often see some of the stuff in those CTFs that, that you get to practice with. And when you do see it, like it's nice to have that kind of polished up and a good place to, to practice and teach people so you're not having to stand up your lab and do a bunch of crazy stuff. I think it's it's pretty awesome from your standpoint, what you provide back to the community for uh, people learning and, and watching and seeing how, how it's done. Because some of those boxes are hard to understand, especially if you're not used to doing CTFs, like kind of what the goals are, how to read them, and how to walk through them. So it's cool stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And I try, to, I try to do this stuff blind so that people get to see like the authentic hacking process. You know, like they uh, like you can go watch an IPSEC video or a walkthrough video on a tri on a try hack me box or a hack the box machine and see um, the polished run through of the box where the person already knows everything to do and all that stuff. Um, but on my stream, what you're getting is someone like poking at the box, not really sure what to do, po like enumerating. Um, trying stuff, failing, trying more stuff, failing some more, getting frustrated, uh, and then finally something works and we all get to celebrate together. Um, which I think, um, I think, um, has hit a ner hit a, hit a chord for some people. I think some people really enjoy seeing, um, seeing other people struggle the same way that they do. Like even no matter how, and I really try to like, I really try to, uh, push through in my streams that we're all, no matter how experienced you are at this stuff, you're always uh, like learning all the time like there's never going to be a point where you completely mastered any of this it's just it's just constant improvement and chasing a goal that you'll never actually reach um so i think a lot of people especially beginners really uh latch on to seeing someone like me like 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 make mistakes and fumble around and uh try to figure stuff out on the fly it encourages them so yeah i'm glad yeah, you're enjoying mistakes, the content i'm the putting out part is, and uh is super important <laughs> I mean, you're, you're spot on there. Like, it's people don't see the red team, the failures, the OPSEC issues, getting caught, like building stuff for hours and months, and and having it you know get flagged. Like, those are those are important struggles to see. And I think that's. I mean, the the first try hack me was the last try hack me I did. Let's see who won, who it is. Oh, oh my, my goodness, gosh. Gin and Miskatonic. Nice job. He says he thought he lost in the Discord. He's excited now. Um. <laughs> But uh, he says he thought he lost, and then, uh, uh, but Briggs came in and said he was pretty slow. 
congratulations, yeah. Jin and Miskatonic. If you want to come into the, can we get Jin and Miskatonic on? Is that something that we're uh, that we we're try. equipped to do? Yeah, if you'd like to come on, Jin and Miskatonic, you can uh, come on and tell us your secrets about hacking, or just like in general, or <laughs> <laughs> about how we solve the challenges. I suppose. Oh, okay. I would, I would be curious to see how he's how he was doing some of these. If it was just straight up Google, if he was leveraging tools, making polarity work for him, I don't know. And the winner of the last round, uh, not the overall, but was N, won that round for the disassembly there. Nice. Shell code. Very they're, nice. They're Very uh, nice it. questions there. I really like. I enjoyed. I enjoyed a lot of those. Yeah, Paul. Well done on those. Those are very relevant. Very uh, well done and, and required. You know, not a ton of time, but enough time, and that's really hard to create. Yeah. No, uh, it, it's uh, they're fun to create, but uh, you know, a thank you back to uh, everyone else in the uh, backstage who helped with it, and to all the competitors who. I think you know, practice the honor system and uh, ethically it uh, participated. That way. It seemed that way. It seemed that way. 